Uh, it's great to be here for Media Days and uh, appreciate all your, you know, just uh, coverage of our teams and, uh, you know, ours in particular. Um, some great stories out there to be shared. Um, but uh, just, uh, just especially I love promoting our guys and uh, promoting our program. So uh, thanks for all, all your coverage. We we'll start with George in the front row. George T, CBS News, Texas. Hey, Coach, you've done a lot um, building relationships with former players at the University of Alabama. I just curious to hear what do you think the impact it has with the coach who maybe didn't coach those guys does for your program? Well, roll tide, George. Uh, um, and what was the last part you were talking? So how does it impact? The development of your program. Yeah, the relationships. Um, the relationships, I think, are critical. Um, you know, we talk about the vision that you have and that you want uh, for your program, um, but really, you know, taking one step back, uh, I'm a firm believer that before you can really sell the vision and get the buy-in on what you want that vision to be, um, you have to have a relationship. And uh, they got to know that you care um, before they really, you know, care about what you know and what, what you try to to sell to them and what you want the program to look like. And uh, that buy-in happens because of the relationships. Left side, fourth row. Dan Peck, ESPN 106.7 in Auburn. Coach, what were the most difficult parts of making the decision to take the Alabama job? Uh, the most difficult, I think just uh, family. You know, uh, you move around um, and I think uh, we've lived in the last 15 years, I think in 13 or 14 different houses, um, you know, in about nine cities I think and so nine different moves and so um, knowing that that takes a toll not just on myself but my family um, that's that's hard um, got two daughters that are uh, getting older and one's uh, actually going to be a freshman at Washington and so that was a pretty unique situation and a great uh, great setup there but uh, you know getting their support uh, was really important and uh, you know once I had that just continue to you know, follow up, follow through uh, on this opportunity and work with Greg Byrne, um, just realizing what the vision was for this program and what it has been and um, understanding uh, the support I'd get. Uh, you know, it's just uh, made it to where, you know, I understood again why this place is special and why I wanted to be the head coach here. Right side, front row. Hey, Kaylin, good morning. Uh, Zach Klein with WSB Channel 2 in Atlanta. I'm curious how far back, if at all, your relationship goes with Kirby Smart. And what can everyone expect for your first SEC game? Yeah, um, re really other than just the meetings uh, here recently, it hasn't been a lot of uh, or any uh, interaction I've had with Coach Smart um, from afar. You know, you follow the, the best of the best. And, um, you know, he's been at Alabama. He's got a great uh, coaching history there as the head coach at Georgia, um, you know, Watching, watching the the games they've been a part of, um, you know, you're always trying to take from those teams that are that are there at the end of the year, and so uh, nothing but respect, and you know, just you know, I have an appreciation, I think, for the game itself and uh, people who are trying to make the game better, and um, I certainly, you know, would appreciate what he's doing for our conference as uh, you know one of the the leaders um, and representing our conference uh, when it comes to improving our game as well. Front row, left side. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. AP Stedham, AP and Kelly, as we see at Syndicated Radio. Coach, there's two units I use the term like a chorus line, the offensive line and the defensive back. How do you get them ready for the big stage on Broadway, and what are some road protocols that are important for your team? Offensive line and defensive back? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, when it comes to those positions in our program right now, um, I think we – we made a lot of headway as far as uh, gaining some depth. Um, I felt, you know, going in the spring, maybe that position was one that maybe, you know, might be a little bit uh, concerning when it comes to the depth uh, experience. But the way it all really came together, we all of a sudden now have, you know, an interior that's got a lot of experience uh, with Parker Brailsford. Uh, Tyler Booker, Jaden Roberts, um, and then, you know, getting uh, Caden Proctor back along with the development of Elijah Pritchett, who did a great job, Will inform me, some others as well. Um, I really feel like it's actually uh, a strength of our team now. Um, I felt that even at the end of spring, and now I continue to see these guys work this summer, feel, this, I feel even more so. Uh, defensive back, I think we can we put a lineup out there that uh, is got some experience, um, but I think us as a coaching staff, it's going to be really important to just 
every single day, press upon these guys because we have a lot of youth that is very talented um, and just pressing on them how important every day is and their development is going to be critical for us, not just from a depth standpoint, but uh, we could have some young guys out there playing uh, sooner than later uh, when it comes to you know playing defensive back and corner in particular. The proto. Uh huh. Um, I mean, I, you know, we all have our different beliefs when it comes to going on the road and and what we try to do and the protocols. Um, I uh, I guess I like to get there as late as possible, especially if it's an afternoon or evening game. Um, I know we play the 11 o'clock kickoff there at Wisconsin, so you got to account for some travel and things like that. But uh, try to get as much done at home um, before getting on a on a plane. And um, you know, to me, by that time. Um, it's just kind of tips and reminders and things like that. Uh, just continued walkthroughs. Um, just want the guys to be confident, relaxed, uh, doing everything you can to, to make sure their headspace is good uh, going into the Saturday. Right side, third row. Kennedy Wright with CBS 42. Coach, can you talk a little bit about how hard was it or it, what, was it even a challenge to bring your own culture and beliefs to a team that's deeply rooted in traditions and kind of has its own culture already? Yeah, I mean, I respect, uh, and I've done it enough times to where you go to different places, whether it's as an assistant or as a head coach, to where you kind of know, uh, and, and the first thing, you know what you need to try to do early, and the first thing is to just listen. Listen to what those things are, whether it's the players, whether it's the alumni, you know, uh, those within the building, just kind of hear, you know, what are front and center, the ones that, uh, that are the traditions that are most important to them, um, the reasons for you know, the success, uh, what's been done. Uh, fortunately, I retained a lot of staff, uh, and a lot of that continuity, I think, helped with a lot of those traditions, and again, helping me understand what I don't know. Um, but then I think there's also just got to be a piece of, and it's probably it's more of the scheduling and just the, the methods that we will use, uh, timing, um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, just, you know, things that have worked for me work for uh, the programs I've been a part of, what I've learned. Um, and I think that it's not necessarily always a right or wrong. Um, it's more about how you blend it all together. Uh, and so um, those things were important to me. You know, we're, we're going to practice in the mornings. You know, and I don't think there's a right and wrong. We've had success mornings and afternoons, but how I, I can mesh things together and just, you know, make a schedule throughout the week that fits uh, practice in the mornings, um, that's something that uh, – you know, I feel like I understand well, and uh, that's something that I think our guys have embraced and, you know, have educated them. Again, this isn't necessarily the only way you win, um, but this is the way that uh, I've achieved success, and I think uh, they're very open to it, and I appreciate our guys for being that way. Left side, third row, and then pass the microphone to your left. Yes, sir. Good morning, Coach. Tony Reese out of WCVM out of Columbus, Georgia, the ABC affiliate. What would you say has been the biggest challenge you faced since being at Alabama, and how have you been, over, been able to overcome it so far? Biggest challenge, I think the biggest challenge, oh, I know the biggest challenge was early on. Um, the first two weeks, um, with the timing of everything, being in the middle of January, there's no question. I mean, you got a contact period. Uh, we're a 12-2 and two football team um, that went to a semifinal game. A lot of talent on our roster, highly, highly recruited football players. Um, you know, and so uh, it with the portal being open for 30 days when a head coach uh, – change happens, um, you know, that was intense. It really was. And uh, you're trying to manage a retention of a roster with building a staff. And the building of the staff helps with, with uh, retention of the roster, um, but just things come in your way. Um, uh, a lot of bullets in the air, you know, uh, that I know uh, I couldn't be more proud of our staff and our team for just working through. A lot of noise that was out there. Um, and, and, you know, there's a couple guys that uh, moved on. Um, but for the majority of our team to stick around and stay, um, it was probably the toughest time, but it's one that uh, I think has been re very rewarding when it comes to us understanding who we are and appreciation for what we've been through so far here in the first six months. Stay on the left side, third row. Tyler Shaw with, with KBTX and College Station. Uh, how much have you and, and Nick Saban kind of talked since um, – Take, taking over the role and kind of going off that challenge is what kind of unique challenges um, do you have in this role after taking over um, from Saban? Well, I think Coach Saban's been nothing but gracious uh, with time. Anytime I've reached out to him, um, you know, he has an office over there at Stadium. We got a chance to go over there a couple times to see him and uh, 
you know, he's a busy man too, you know, and he's got his, uh, his things he's doing. But, uh, you know, I think I have just, a, a, you know, first of all, want him to always know that he's welcome. But I also appreciate that he has put forth the ultimate respect in trying to uh, let us kind of establish who we are. Um, but, you know, I, I, I just, I said it earlier, you know, this morning that anyone who's poured into this program, I want them to always feel a part of it because they've got us to this place and there's no, no one um, more than Coach Saban that's put this program on the map to the level it is right now. And so, um, you know, I just appreciate the, any wisdom he shares, uh, you know, whether it be program related or just football in general. Um, he's a promoter of the game. I know he's going to knock it out of the park with his opportunity there as an analyst as well. Um, and so um, it's a it's a great asset to have close to home. Um, but uh, you know, it's been he's been great for our staff as well. A couple of our staff members have gone over there uh, and met with him, um, whether it's uh, football related or even not football related. So nothing but appreciation uh, for everything he's been to us so far at this point. Right side, fourth row, then pass the microphone to your right. Hey, Coach, Michael Brawner for WNSP in Mobile. You talked a lot about Jalen Milrow in there. A lot of people have been hopeful that you'll be able to help him take that next step as a passer. Of course, the season Michael Penix had for you last year. What do you think it is about your offense that allows a quarterback to be the best version of themselves? Yeah, sure. I think that there's, um, I mean, I think, first of all, the talent of your quarterback is most important, right? Um, you know, I mean, you can go to drastic levels and talk about a guy who can't pass. Well, in the end, your passing game's not going to be what you want it to be. But, um, you know, Jalen's super talented, uh, you know, when it comes to down the field throws, which are not easy. Um, he was one of the best in the country. Um, he and Michael both were two of the top of just, uh, I think, three or four in the country when it came to accuracy, efficiency, yards per, yards per attempt uh, in some of those areas, depending on how you look at it. Um, but, uh, you know, I think just continue to grow his game, build confidence. Um, it's new language, verbiage that he's got to learn, um, directing, directing the whole show, you know, and knowing the things that he can do within our system without making it too complicated. That's what Michael had, um, and he had a few years at it, right, because we were together at 2019, 2020, he ran the same system under Nick Sheridan at Indiana, 21. I know there was real partial seasons, but then 22 and 23 um, there at Washington. So he had a multiple years. And so, you know, Jalen's just pouring himself into this, um, learning it as fast as he can. Um, you're never going to question the work ethic of this guy. And, uh, um, you know, from a passing standpoint, he's got the skill set. He's got the tools. And now it's just tying the footwork to the reads and the progression, knowing when to take off and run, knowing how to move the chains, believing that, hey, you know, in each other that if, if you uh, can go through your progression, we can call those shots down the field. If, uh, if it's not there and you check it down the next time, we can call it again and be confident in calling them more often than, uh, than less. Right side, fourth row. Hey, Coach, Ben Bobick, Local 3 News in Chattanooga. Uh, Amari Jefferson, a, a kid from the Chattanooga area, stayed over from uh, Saban's recruitment. How do you foresee using him, his playmaking ability in, in your offense, and has he transitioned to the college Football, at least, you know. Yeah, you know, one. Amari just came in this summer and uh, extremely, you know, talented, highly touted, um, just uh, versatile. You know, you see it with the other sports and things that he can do. Um, but, um, you know, I think right now we're just learning the offense, learning the system. Um, you know, we get to work with them skill set wise uh, during this time of the year. Um, so, you know, I get a chance to see that. And uh, you can see that he's going to become a really good player in our program. And, um, you know, at that position, um, you just, you know, we will, we'll rotate guys in, and especially if they got an, a, a way that they can help us um, with different certain packages. Uh, and, you know, um, I'm anxious to get to work with Amari here in uh, the month of August and, uh, you know, get him, uh, see how quickly he can pick things up and get out there and, and do some things for us. One final quick question right here on the left. Uh, good morning, Coach. Michael Giddens, War Report, Auburn, Alabama. Uh, can you talk about the difference in the types of defenses you had success against in the pack and what you'll be facing week in and week out in the SEC? And, you know, will any of those differences have an impact on your decisions to either call plays or delegate that responsibility? Yeah, uh, from a calling play standpoint, um, you know, Nick Sharon will call the plays. And, I, you know, I just think Nick's a brilliant mind. Um, we have some 
great staff uh, that I know uh, with a guy like Jamarcus Shepard. They've worked together now for multiple years, and um, certainly I'm, you know, very much involved in not just the offense but the defense too. Um, and in the, in the system is what we've built over many years. Years, and you know, um, I know Nick's extremely sharp in knowing how to to go on the tangents we need to with the personnel we have to make the offense the best it can be. Um, but uh, that's, you know, um, I think when it comes to applying it to the defenses we'll see this year, um, I think there's always going to be a variety. I think every conference presents a variety. The talent level here and there uh, might be different. Uh, the strengths might be different. Um, you know, the styles you see, um, there might be more trends in one conference than another. But I think at some point throughout the season, you see almost everything. Um, coaches go from different sides of the countries to, to the others, and they institute their their packages, their schemes. And so, um, you know, I think having done this now over 20 years, I think you've, I don't want to say seen everything, but I think you've seen a lot. And uh, you know how to manipulate, uh, you know, defenses. You know how to, um, you know, attack uh, in, in the areas uh, maybe that were weak and how to, how people are going to look at you, I think, is as much as important as anything, you know, and uh, them trying to stop what you do best. And so having those little tangents that I referred to um, and sharp coaches like we have, um, you know, that's important because uh, this, as the season goes on, we'll continue to evolve our offense and had to adjust and counter the things that are coming at us. Coach, thank you very much. You Wish bet. we had more thank time. You. Roll Tide.